So in today's video, I'm going to discuss about how to find a research problem. Now this particular issue is very important whether you are doing a PhD degree or master's degree or even a bachelor's degree project in the final year. And also it's extremely important if you are a practicing research scientist or a faculty because finding a research problem is the first step towards doing research and also this is the first step towards writing a good research proposal or formulating a research proposal. So today I'll start with a broad outline about this process and I will look at a specific problem which we have formulated some time ago and for which we wrote a proposal and a PhD thesis was also created based on this and publications were presented. So the first thing you need to do is that you need to find a broad topic which is of interest to you and which is also of interest to the person who is supervising your work and it's also of interest to the grant giving body or the body which is giving fellowship for which you are writing the proposal. So all these three must be satisfied by this particular broad topic. So let's say you are somebody who has developed a keen interest in the subject of mechanics. You liked mechanics when you were in high school as a part of physics and later you studied some discipline where you found that you were stronger in mechanics as compared to different fields. And so you are now a graduate student and you want to continue work in mechanics. Now mechanics is a very broad field. So you will need to narrow it down further. So maybe you find, found solid mechanics to be more of your cup of tea. And so you want to focus on solid mechanics rather than fluid mechanics. So now solid mechanics is also a very broad field. So you look around in your department, you look around at some of the senior researchers and graduate students. And you find that the particular university you are at or the particular department you are at has a strong program in smart structures. So basically you find out that smart structures is a field where you take a certain structure which may be made of metal or composites and you add sensors and actuators to this structure. And these sensors and actuators are composed of so called smart materials which may be piezo ceramics, shape memory materials, magnet restrictive alloys and so on. And the reason why these actuators and sensors are put on the substructure is that it lets you monitor the health or condition of the structure and it also lets you to control this particular structure. So you find out that there is this broad problem on smart structures and there is a lot of work in this area. And you develop an interest in this problem because it combines aspects of solid mechanics with material science and also it brings in aspects of control which you also find to be somewhat interesting. So now that you have zoomed on to the broad problem of smart structures you find somebody who can guide you in this problem or you go through self study in terms of research to formulate your own particular research problem if you are a research scientist or a faculty. Now of course smart structure is a very broad problem and there must be some reason as to why you want to use smart structure. So you look around you and you find that there is a lot of funding and there are some faculty who are working on a problem of vibration reduction using smart structures. So this is where the problem becomes practical and maybe this vibration reduction problem is looking at a certain vehicle such as a car or a motorcycle and then your aim is to reduce vibration in this vehicle by using a smart structure concept. So basically at this point you have developed a broad thesis statement and your thesis statement can be written as reduce vibration using smart structures. So that's the intent of the work you want to do for the research problem. Now you will quickly realize 
that this is a very broad topic if you go into google scholar and type this particular thesis statement so if you type reduce vibration using smart structures you will get a plethora of publications which will come out for this particular topic so of course what you need to do is that you need to narrow this problem down and one of the things to do at this point is to get hold of a review paper on this topic so if you are lucky you will find a review paper in this particular area and if the review paper is recent then this person has done a large amount of your work and so you have a head start so as you go through these review papers you need to read them carefully and you need to find out what exactly are the remaining problems in the field so the review paper should tell you what are the problems which have been solved by prior research and what are the problems which remain to be solved for future research so this is something you need to find out now once you have found this out you also need to look at the papers published in the last 1 to 3 years and again google scholar can let you tailor your search to see the recent papers in the field and this will tell you where the current research is going on and this will tell you what are the topics of interest in this field now as you do this kind of literature survey you are going to realize that there are far too many papers in the field for you to build a research topic on the whole concept of vibration reduction using smart structure and you also start realizing that there are various smart materials and you can categorize this field in terms of the different materials which are used to create the smart structure now for example you find that there are piezo shape memory magnetostrictive and so on so now at this point you need to again look at your own interests you need to look at the interests of your supervisor you need to look at the interest of the grant giving people and so on now let us assume that the people who are giving you grants are coming from a corporate setting and therefore they are interested in a more realistic problem and so for your literature survey has shown that the piezo ceramic is probably the most realistic problem at the current level of technology and you also find that there are certain devices such as piezo fans which are being actually used in various real systems and therefore piezo technology has advanced to a greater degree than some of the different technologies in the field you also find that some of the different technologies have different kind of problems such as uh, the amount of deflection you can get from them the non linear effects and so on so at this point let us assume you have zoomed into the piezo uh, like material as the particular material which you are going to use for your problem so now what you have done is that you have narrowed your thesis statement down to something which looks like vibration reduction using piezo ceramic smart structures so here you have brought in the word piezo ceramic here and now this has narrow down your particular research problem to some extent so now what you need to do is you need to do a deep literature survey in this area so you need to do a deep dive into google scholar and you need to find out all the papers which have come out in this study and again keep an eye out for any review paper because that's going to simplify your work considerably now let us say you have collected uh, 100 papers in this area a few review papers and then you have quickly browsed through these papers using the theory which i have propounded in my previous video on how to quickly go through papers because you basically read the abstract you read some of the introduction you read some of the conclusion you scan through the graphs and tables and you determine whether this paper is useful to you for further work so at the end of these three or this particular process you have zoomed on to three broad approaches which have been used by people in this field of piezo based smart structure research for vibration reduction and essentially what happens is that piezo materials have three particular material properties as far as piezoelectric coefficients are concerned so you find out that these are d31 d33 and d15 and what do you find out that many people have used d31 and d33 in their research but very few people have used the d15 or the shear concept okay so this is somewhat technical if you are not in this area but just bear with me what i am saying is that you have zoomed on to one of the sub topics of piezos which has not been researched on by people to a large extent you find maybe one or two researchers have done work in this area 
So now you further zoom down in your literature survey and find out all the papers which have used the shear mode D15 piezo concept in their problems. So this is again a deep search. So at the end of the search, you would read all these papers and you would become somewhat of an expert on the topic of shear mode piezos and how they have been used in the literature. Now when you do this, you find that very few researchers have actually looked at this problem. A lot of work has been done by physics researchers on this problem and they have also found that the particular coefficient D15 which you are looking at has a non-linear behavior with respect to the voltage or the electric field. You also find that there are various graphs and experiments which show this non-linear behavior but nobody has utilized this particular D15 property of the piezo ceramic to actuate and to build a smart structure. So now you have zoomed on to a narrow problem which you think you can do. So I would say now your thesis statement turns to something like vibration reduction in a structure using shear mode piezo ceramics. So this looks like a final problem which can be considered to be a problem for a master's thesis or a PhD thesis or for a research proposal. So at this point you have narrowed down your search com considerably and so you also have found out certain peculiar aspects of this problem. You are going to look at the shear mode of piezo ceramics. You are going to look at the non-linear phenomena which this particular problem can have and you are going to do some simulations or experiments by putting this particular shear mode uh, piezo onto some structures and doing some simulations. So basically at this point you now have a more coherent problem in terms of your research and this problem can become the topic of either your thesis or it can be a topic of a proposal you are submitting to some grant giving body and then you are on track to now write a research proposal on this problem which can be a research proposal either for your masters or PhD or it can be a research proposal to a grant giving body or a postdoctoral fellowship. Now of course depending on the level of the problem you are dealing with uh, the amount of work you will do on the problem may change and you may need to narrow it down further if you are doing a master's or you need to broaden it if you are doing a PhD. So for example if you are doing a master's degree then simply doing some simulations and modeling may be sufficient for this work. If you are doing an experimental work then that again would be sufficient for a master's degree to do a purely experimental work. If you are doing a PhD work you probably need to do the simulations, the experiments and you need to do some more parametric studies and bring out something deeper in this model such as how you address the non-linear problems in control systems and so on. So again that could be also a typical problem for a research proposal where you look at the entire problem of controlling of a smart structure using this D15 system and how to look at the non-linear phenomena in this particular problem. So again this is how you can look at a problem. So you have basically started with a broad area. So here I started with mechanics, I went to solid mechanics, went to smart structures, then expanded it to piezo smart structures, then looked at the shear mode of the piezo smart structure, looked at the non-linear behavior of this particular shear mode coefficient and using this I framed the problem because there was not much research and in fact there was no research on this particular problem. And in fact when we did this work quite some time ago the work which we did was published as several journal papers and resulted in a PhD thesis and also the work was part of a research proposal we submitted to a company and all these were successful. So again this is a basic outline about how to get a research problem. And that is the first step toward writing a proposal or doing a degree or writing a PhD thesis. So I hope this video was useful to you and stay tuned to my channel for further videos on such topics. Thank you very much.